action load iris, and the iris object is a bunch object that contains different keys. It has the target names, the data, the target, a description of the data set, and the feature names. Okay? Description is the descript a verbose description of the data set. Feature names are the four different features I already mentioned in the previous slides. The target names are the, the targets we expected on this data set. In particular, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica, the three different iris species we want to predict. Then we have the data. So we, uh, iris.data comes as a NumPy matrix, NumPy and the array. The shape of this matrix is uh, 150, 100, uh, 150 rows times four, uh, four, which is four different colors, uh, columns. And the targets are 150 because we have a value for the target, a uh, value of target for each sample in the data set. So N, the number of samples in this case is 150. D, the number of feature in this case is four. And that's it. Um, the targets, here is the, the, the result of the target. Okay, so we have a value that ranges from zero to two corresponding to the three different classes we want to predict. We might try to apply a classification problem on this uh, data. We want to exploit the KNN algorithm. The idea of the KNN classifiers is pretty simple. Uh, in, for example, if we consider a, a K which is equal to six, we're going to uh, check the, um, the, the classes. This is the, a new data. We train our model with the, the, the training data, and we want to predict the class of this new data uh, on the, um, the the classes of the, the six nearest neighbors of this data, okay? In this case, uh, should be the Virginica, okay? The, the, the dot, uh, the red dot. Okay, very simple. In scikit, few lines of code. We import the data set, we call the k neighbor classifier algorithm. In this case, we select n neighbors equals to one. Then we call the fit method and we train our model. Then if this is what we get, actually, if we want to plot the data, these, these are called the decision boundaries of the classifier. And if we want to know for new data, which is the kind uh, which is a species of iris that has three centimeter times five centimeters uh, sepal and four times two centimeters uh, petal width. Okay, right. Let's check iris dot target names of knn dot predict because knn is a classifier, so it may fit the data and also predict uh, after the training. And it says, okay, it's a virginica. Okay. So far, so good. Right. Then we may also try to, uh, instead of um, facing this problem as a classification, you may also face this problem as a non in an unsupervised setting, so as a clustering problem. In this case, we are going to use the k-means algorithm. The k-means algorithm, is the idea is pretty simple. The, we want to recreate an, a, a cluster of objects, and each, each object is equally distant to the center of this of this uh, cluster, okay? And that's it. In scikit, it's very simple. We have the k-means. We, we specify the number of clusters we want to have in the k-means. In this case, we want three clusters because we're going to predict three different um, species for the iris. And then this is the ground through. So this is the, the value we expected. This is what we got after calling the uh, K means. As you may uh, already uh, notice, the interface for the two algorithms is exactly the same, even if the machine learning settings are completely different. In the former case, it was supervised. In this latter case, it's unsupervised. Okay? So classification versus clustering. Finally, very few slides to conclude. Uh, another great battery included in Scikit, and I'm, uh, I don't know how many other Machine learning uh, libraries in Python are, are so complete in terms of batteries is about the model evaluation algorithm. Model evaluation is necessary to know how do we know if our predictor or our prediction model is good. So we apply model validation techniques. We may 
uh, simply try to verify that every prediction corresponds to the actual to the actual target. Okay, but this is meaningless because we are trying to verify if we train all the data on the training. Okay, so this is this kind of evaluation is very poor because uh, because it's based only on the training. So we we are just checking if we are uh, able to feed the data, but we are not able to uh, to test if the model, the final model, is able to generalize, okay? Because a key feature of this kind of technique is the generalization. So, no uh, go too much to the training data because it's it, you will end up in a problem which is called overfitting. But you need to generalize to, to, to be able to noise and to be able to predict even new data that are not actually uh, identical to the training data, okay? One usually uh, technique, uh, user technique in machine learning is the so-called confusion matrix, okay? Mm, Scikit provides, or in the, the matrix package, provides different kind of metrics to evaluate your performance. In this case, we're, we're going to use the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix is very simple. It's a matrix where uh, it, it's the number, of, it has, it's a square matrix where the rows and the columns correspond to the number of classes you want to predict, okay? And in the diagonal, you have all the, the classes uh, that you expect with respect to the classes that you predict, okay? So you have all the possible matchings. If you have all the data there, on the um, on the, the diagonal itself that you predicted perfectly all the classes. Okay, is that clear? Okay, great, thank you. But a, um, a very well known uh, for you guys that are already aware of machine learning is the cross validation technique. Cross validation is a mode of validation techniques for assessing how the results of the statistical knowledge of the data is able to generalize to independent data sets, not only to the data set we use for training. Okay, and Scikit already provide all the features to handle this kind of stuff. So Scikit uh, um, imposes us to write very few code just the few lines of code necessary to import the functions already provided in the library. Um, in other cases, we were, need, we were required to implement this kind of function over and over for every time in, in our Python code, okay? So this is very, um, very useful even for lazy programmers like me, okay? In this case, we have we exploit the train test split. So we the idea of the cross validation here is uh, the to splitting the data, uh, uh, the training data in two different sets, uh, the 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 training set and the test set. So we fit on the training set and we predict on the test set. Okay. So in this case, we will see we 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 see that there are some errors. Okay, coming from this 